Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the European Crossover Webinar. And it's a very quiet session today uh, because we do have uh, Asia and Hong Kong, and as it, the Reuters thing points out, most major um, countries in Europe are going to be closed also today for uh, Easter holiday. So it's going to be very, very light trading. Matter of fact, we need, they, uh, I saw on the news blurb, uh, Ransquawk is closed for the next few hours. Um, and then uh, we didn't even get a, uh, uh, you know, we these like to do the morning bid report. We didn't even get the morning bid. So I did have a little bit of news for coverage overnight and a small story on the dollar and or for FX, and that is about it. But we are trading, you know, very, very quiet at this time uh, and should go and remain quiet, even really through the U.S. session. We'll get a little bit more activity because U.S. markets won't, will not be closed. But uh, I'm not sure how much they'll push push things around. But we'll go and take a look at the news, and we'll go and get start started in the analysis for the week ahead. So it says Asian stocks slip and oil near a sixth month peak as U.S. prepares to tighten Iran sanctions. Um, Asia uh, shares have slipped on Monday, way down by underperforming Chinese stocks, while oil prices rallied on news the United States is likely to ask all importers of Iranian oil to end their purchases or face sanctions. And uh, I saw something on um, Twitter shows that's already gone into effect, or now it's, they have asked. Uh, also posted, if you saw in the chat room, uh, says Saudi Arabia is willing to raise oil output to compensate for potential loss of supply if U.S. ends Iran oil waivers, but Kingdom C must see impact on oil markets first. That says sources familiar with the Saudi thinking, but the, the thing would be is they want to see the impact where prices do raise, and then they would do it. I don't necessarily think that means a one-day thing. So, yeah, we've seen oil jump jump up again, now up to, oh, heck, almost up to $66. I'm sure on $65.86 for the high, currently at $65.40. Brent and U.S. crude futures are to nearly six-month highs on news reports that the U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo will announce that as of May 2nd, the State Department will no longer grant sanction waivers to any country that is currently importing Iranian crude or condensate. Uh, the uh, potential disruption to Iranian supplies are expected to add to an already tight oil market. The U.S. chief Iran hawks have indeed have that the president's ear as Pompeo and advisor Bolton are singularly focused on bringing Iran's economy to its knees, says Stephen Innes, head of trading at SPI Asset Management. Predictably, oil prices is arising, he said. Following the Good Friday holiday, markets in Britain, Germany, and France will remain closed for Easter Monday, while those in the United States will reopen. Asian equities dipped after Chinese stocks retreated from a 13-month high as comments from top policymaking bodies raise investors fears that Beijing will slow the pace of policy easing after some signs of stabilization in the world's uh, second largest economy. So here's two key things is that, you know, obviously – uh, with oil, that's going to go on way on equities. Okay, I know they've been, you know, you know, it even shows the Nasdaq up at all time highs, but the S and P's, if that doesn't slow things down, I don't know what will. I mean, that's the potential impact going going forward. And although you know we're looking at U.S. equities, you know, way up here in the stratosphere, Nasdaq all time highs, but this is certainly going to impact the European economy that's already having a tough time to start with, you know, specifically Germany, the engine of the, of the Eurozone. Now we do have the DAX way up here, you know, up in this, up in the stratosphere too. But once again, that will impact. Also, one of the reasons that we had this extra run up in, uh, in stocks to add on is because China's been, you know, doing their stimulus and they feel, Hey, it's we're showing more signs, a little bit more signs. Well, they're not, that great of signs, but it's basically, you know, picking itself up from the basement, moving on to the first floor. But it does say Chinese stocks retreated from a 13 month high as comments from top policymaking bodies and investors fear that Beijing will slow the pace of policies. And so that will work as a, you know, um, kind of a pull down on stocks. It won't have that extra push they can have. And then on top of that, you couple that with energy prices moving higher. Now, not only does it affect the economy, that takes money out of the pockets of, you know, uh, uh, 
people that they, they could you know spend on the economy because it's it's basically a surcharge tax not only on individuals as businesses because you're paying more for you know goods you're paying more for transportation I'm talking about the businesses and then for individuals you'll have less disposable income now this might sound like economy 101 or 101 dash dash B but I'm just saying it's just things to keep in mind I'm not saying the markets are going to heck in a handbasket I'm just saying that may work as a drag to slow down the ascent and also make it more susceptible to a little bit of a pullback uh, that being said, uh, the MSI's broadest index of Asian shares uh, outside Japan lost three tenths, edging away from a nine-month peak scale last week after Chinese economic data beat expectations and eased concerns about the health of the world economy. Shanghai Composite Index was down 1.3 percent. The KOSPI edged down two tenths. In currencies, the dollar uh, index was. Uh, Against the backs of major countries, was a touch lower at 97.39. We'll get to all that. Let's go on and move on to currencies now. The dollar firmed in post then post holiday trading and loony up as oil prices jump. Yeah, the oil prices is going to you know affect uh, multiple markets, uh, and we'll get to that. The dollar edged up against its peers, such as the euro and the yen, on Monday, boosted by relative strength of the U.S. economy while losing ground against the Canadian dollar fund the rise in crude oil prices. Financial markets in Australia, Hong Kong, and many, many major countries in Europe are closed on Monday for the Easter holiday. Currency trading continues globally, but volume is expected to be light. The dollar was lackluster against the loonie as crude oil prices rose more than 2%. Following a Washington Post report, the United States is likely to ask all importers of Iranian oil to end their purchases or be subject to sanctions. The greenback has found support in recent weeks on the back of a gradual rise in U.S. 10-year yields and the signs of strength in the world's top economy including better than expected retail sales in March while a weak start to the year. It's better to say the euro has been weak rather than the dollar is strong, said Yukio Ishizuki, senior currency strategist. Um, Traders have mostly priced in the weakness of the eurozone economy by now, Ishizuki said. It's a little difficult to see the euro weakening further from here, so I think it will be hard for the dollar to strengthen. The dollar index was last down at 10th at 97.38. The index remains in striking distance of its 2019 high of 9771. Uh, seems kind of laughable for him to say this. Here's the market. I mean, uh, you know, I don't, I, don't, I don't get that. But anyway, uh, now, like I said, we're at a very key area here where the, uh, I have a key weekly level we've been talking about for a long time, 9789, which confluences with 9789 being the 61% of the entire move of 8823 to 103. 83, I think it is, but I mean, uh, look, it didn't get there by nothing, and 56% of it is by the euro. So don't tell me the euro is not is not uh, not weak. Now he says most of it may have already been priced in, but at Germany with PMIs below 45, uh, if he thinks that looks sunny and shiny or not so bad, uh, then I don't know what he's smoking. But anyway, investors remain focused on U.S. existing home sales for March due at 1,400 GMT for further clues on the health of the U.S. economy. Yields on U.S. bonds have picked up a bit. I think the dollar is bought to a certain extent in reaction to that, says Kashuziki Keita, head of foreign exchange at State Street. In February, U.S. home sales surged to the highest in 11 months as the housing market showed renewed momentum, by, followed by a pause in interest rate hikes by the Federal Reserve. The euro gave up one tenth to 12.40, adding to last week's losses of nearly half a percent on data on Thursday, showing that activity in German manufacturing sector shrank for a fourth straight month. Oh yeah, yes, yeah, Suzuki says things are not so bad. Okay, certainly was last a shade lower at 12, 12, uh, 129.96. Dipping below the 130 handle, nearly off four tenths. So the Canadian dollar gained about a quarter to 11.94. Uh, gained about a quarter to 33.60 on the back of the rise in crude oil prices. Against the Japanese yen, the dollar was uh, one tenth percent higher to 11.94. <clears throat> Starting on Saturday. On Japan, we'll have an unprecedented 10-day holiday from late April or early May to mark the ascension of the new emperor, Crown Prince Naruhito. Daiwa Suzuki said he expected the currency trade by Japanese investors to remain relatively light as traders and companies are shifting into holiday mode. This is something very key to uh, take into consideration with the yen, yen pairs. Interesting. Hmm. So let's go on and move into the, um, I think I'll, 
We need to post that into the room. Well, we will later. We'll later. So let's go and move into the euro now. And like I said, it's relatively quiet. So we did, we're not seeing much of a change from where we were at the end of the week. But uh, bulls were once again disappointed. The market is poised to test the lows with key weekly level 1149 as the target. Initial resistance is 1280. A daily close above 1324 is needed to break the downside momentum. So let's go move into the euro. So to me, like I said, we're looking here. It looks like we're going to this key weekly level. That's 1149. Now we've talked about that and the market has been trapped in these, these ranges. But, you know, we just, you know, we talked about this ad nauseum about how this market, you know, once, once we finally ended up last, the prior week, not this last week, but the week before above 1291, although quote unquote, albeit only by seven pips, it didn't do much of anything with that. You know, tried to get a little bit higher. Heck, it couldn't even make it to the mid 1350s. Uh, it was f struggling even here just to get past 13 and a quarter, and then we finally slipped. And the German data is just reinforcing that that bad news that we've got here. Um, so we're still looking for a slip down to 11.49. Now, I'm I don't know that the euro is going to completely fall apart. You know, people have talked about 108, and it may still very well do that if the dollar takes its bounce, and those are basically working hand in hand as one moves the other, one moves up, the other one moves down. But I still feel confident that the that the the dollar is going to want to test. They want those 97.89 on the uh, cash dollar index, so we'll see what we do beyond that. Uh, but uh, it certainly seems more susceptible to slide. And also, you have to think about this: those people that got long. You know the euro dollar, and always like I said, just like Blake says, you want to try and put yourself in the in the shoes of those folks. Well, they got long here, they got long here, and they're thinking, okay, we're really going to move higher. And technically, that would have suggested just that. So for those that hung on, and now they saw their their them getting you know stopped out at either a minor gain, break even, or you know losses, you know after where they got in, those people aren't going to say, okay, it's a brand new week, I'm ready to come back. No, they're going to say, you know what, let this market test itself. So initial support would be 1193. I'm not saying that there won't be some support around the 1215, but this would be the entry where someone says, okay, let's let it test 112 and let's see what it does there. So it's 1149, 1280, no changes right there. Um, looking on something very short term, uh, we'd get back to our old friend, which is uh, right here at 12, we'll call it 1214. We used to have a 12.15, so we don't, we don't want it too far away, but we'll go with 12.15 just on a minor because we're doing it on intraday, but we know that our, we're targeting 11.49. It's just back to the old target with some support 11.93, but this, as a dip there, anyone that's short will probably take a little bit off around 12.15. Uh, 12.80, we're going to keep that as resistance. And let's go and move into cable. Cable is set to test the stops below the pivot level of 29.80. A break will initially target supported 28.33, 28.34. A weekly close below the pivot will auger for a movement down to or move down to 26.18 for a range extension. So let's go and take a look at that. So here's the pivot. I mean, the pivot that we've been talking about, 29.80. It's been in place for a very, very long time. You can see that right here. I get above it generates moves higher same thing on the way down down up up I mean, even if it's failed at least it generates it and you know we break lower same thing here move lower oh there's not any any uh momentum we come back up 
look how we come back to test it. We push higher. It's once again support. So we're at that 2980 pivot right now. And it looks like they'll want to test those stops. Like I said, today, Easter holiday, a lot of these uh, major countries in Europe are closed. We know that Asia and Hong Kong, I mean, Hong Kong and Australia are closed. Um, so we're saying that the first support, if we get that close below there, is going to come in at 28.34. If we're able to push below here on the pivot. Now, if we get what we're saying here, and we have 28.76 is 50%. What we're saying is if we get a weekly close below that, then we're looking for a move down here, okay? And that move down here would come in at 26.16, um, and that would be this range, okay? I don't take it from top to bottom. I just take what basically the close areas are and extend that out, and that's how I come up with that. If we get a weekly close, okay, a daily close, we could just come down here, tag 28.34, and maybe let's say the dollar moves up above 97 uh you know, 89 and we jump up to 98, maybe we run out of gas, and we start sliding back. So that could maybe coincide with us finding support down here. So on a break lower, uh, initial support on a break lower would come in at 29.16. If we break that pivot, I think we would hit some good little stops there. So let's go there. See if they break that pivot, they certainly seem destined to want to at least test the stops. Um, as far as resistance, it's going to be right there. Let's go with 30, Let's move on to the Aussie dollar. Exponential moving averages remain in a buy mode, but the market is open to a slide to 71.11 with a move to 70.68 possible. Initial resistance is 72, followed by 72 to 73. So let's go and move into the Aussie. So look, the, the exponential moving averages still have us here in a buy mode. No doubt about that. But I'm looking for potentially a move down here. I mean, I think we're going to slide down. Obviously, I think we'll, we'll we'll come down to 71.21. Now, when I say obvious, I mean obvious as far as the level I'm looking at. Not obviously that there's a guarantee and it's definitive, but we do have our um, exponential moving averages. They remain in the buy mode. Probably have some support coming here into the 20s, lower 121. But I'm looking for potentially a move down in here, 71.11. And we can come all the way down here to 7068, right down here, if we get that slide here in the, um, you can see that coming right across this level there. And that comes in, gives you 7068. So I think we'll come down to, I think it's in the cards, as I said, back on Thursday, uh, when we did the last analysis, 7111. I think it's in the cards for them to slide back there, test the, the stops here. Uh, for anyone that got long uh, very late, uh, and then potentially we could move lower. Uh, resistance does come in at 72 cents. Uh, we'll go with initial resistance at right there, 71.78 for our bias chart. Let's go into the Kiwi.
The Kiwi remains entrenched in sell mode with a move to 66.12 for the next destination stop. A daily close above resistance 67.66 is needed to temporarily break the downside momentum. So let's move on. So I think we're going to get make a move eventually down here to the 66.12. Um, and we would need this move above 67.66 to break the downside momentum. It certainly wouldn't turn it bullish by any stretch of the imagination, but that's what would be needed to break it. Now, when I say break it, I just mean a pause in the sense that any rallies back, selling opportunity, selling opportunity, you get a close above here of 67.66 on a daily, then you have to say, oh, wait a minute, maybe we're a little bit overdone. How much further can we rally? And so the market, well, at that point then, the market, you know, traders were going to believe from a technical standpoint, hey, maybe we're a little bit overdone. How far can we come back? Okay, well, uh, for starters, we're maybe probably looking at 68.22. That'll be a good area to sell. And, um, you know, let's say maybe 68.87. Uh, the market would still remain that sell mode, but it would break the downside momentum where any move up in here, they're going to knock it right back down. So initial resistance, like, like let's take a look here. Initial resistance is going to be 66.27. I'm sorry, pause on 67.27 here. So hit once you get up here and you break here in a daily close, they'll say, oh, well, you know what? We're going to have to see how much further we can push up. Now they're looking for how far the market will take it. So it would, it would temporarily, I don't want to say necessarily break the down some momentum, but it puts a pause into it and allows the market to rise up a little bit further here. So resistance here uh, on the bias chart is going to come in right there, 67, we'll call it 67.26. Well, I think we're going to 66.12, but in the meantime, bias chart support will come in right there at 66.53. Now, as I mentioned before, um, you know, on the bias chart, those are levels that uh, whether you scalp or not, they're levels that are set up for today throughout the next 24 hours now we know it's a slow holiday trading easter holiday uh for many areas of the of the globe okay but uh what but with, at the same token when we have this it doesn't it's not countering anything here i, be, I still believe we're going to get down to 66.12 and we would need that daily close above 67.66 to break it but with the bias chart like i said it tightens things up it's for levels we're looking for that day throughout the next 24 hours. Let's go into the uh, Kiwi Yen. Well, we've already been trading in very tight range on all the yen pairs f f to a certain extent. The euro yen, we saw a little bit more movement, uh, but um, but what we did cover about the news is that uh, they're going to be on a long holiday through the end of May. Wow, um, with the ascension of the new emperor. So that may you know take that take that into consideration with these yen pairs as things may be very very tight you know, for, for a little while. Uh, resistance in, we're going to give it a little bit of room. Well, it's not even that much, but um, we'll go with 74.99.
And we'll have support here at And let's go and move in now to the dollar CAD. This thing looks like it's ready to really start to take off, but certainly the crude oil prices have impacted that. But let's go on to the analysis. The dollar CAD, dollar CAD closed above resistance level 33.82. We even had we had that actually. We mentioned that on Thursday, uh, up with the Asian analysis that we were saying, hey, look, you know, we still have the opportunity to close above that. And we certainly did. The upside challenge will be 35.04 with an expected pause at 34.53. Support is 33.36. Obviously, that's important because with the move that we're seeing here in crude oil. This market had the opportunity to really start to move higher. And this, these new six-month highs in crude oil are certainly going to work as a drag on the market. It's still not off that much, but um, it is off a bit. So we said we had support at 33.36. We're going to go with that for our bias chart resistance, our bias chart support at 33.36. I think the market's going to have a tougher time. It's going to resistance. Uh, I want to be that close. Um, we'll just go back to this 3393, which is what we had before 3393. Right there. And it is bullish. Let's move into the dollar peso. The dollar peso bears have full control, not allowing the bulls even a minor bounce. Mark will not be satisfied until 1865 is tested with a probe to 1858 possible. Resistance is 1887. So let's take a look at what we hear on the daily. So, man, even the slightest bit of a bounce, they get knocked back. I mean, I myself had tried it a couple of times and um, found – I actually ended up at picking up and adding – um, to offset part of my gains on, on the dip back, not gains, but loss. Uh, and I was able to get, you know, some of it back, but it was tough row to hoe. And um, so it certainly looks like, and we tried that here. They came down here. They made a move right back down again, got slapped back down. So 
uh, whether it does or does not, this appears to where they want to go to, to test this 1865. In the meantime, we'll go and take a look, uh, and resistance would come in, we're showing here at 1887. We'll take a look a little bit closer, move here. On the bias chart support for right now, 1872. It's going to be 1872.5. Once again, those levels are for today into the next 24 hours, although it certainly looks like we're going to want to make a venture to 1865 with these bears in full control. Resistance. If right now on the bias chart is 1885.7. Now we have it on the daily, it's 1887, but uh, for the bias chart, we're looking at 1885.7. We'll actually could go with that 87 because we're so oversold, we could easily hit some stops, and it's going to be key for this market to get above 1887 on a daily close to get at least a little bit of a pause. So, yeah, let's stay with that 87 because uh, we hit some hit some stops for any bears that may have come in very, very late, might get knocked out. Let's move into the dollar yen. There we go. The dollar yen is holding above the breakout level of the 1187 by a thread. The lack of follow through has bulls scratching their heads. Up, upside daily close resistance is 1224 with support at 1136. We had 1226 last week, towards the end of the week. Here's that 1187, and that was so key, and they got above it, and they did a whole bunch of a bunch of nothing. But don't forget, this bunch of nothing might still continue unless we get a break here, a downside break in equities, which that's possible with these oil prices continuing to move higher. Uh, nobody likes to upset the apple cart. So um, that may, once again, open the door. You might not see a big move today, but you might see a little bit of positioning for that move. So keep in mind about that because we're not seeing that much of a reaction in equities. But once we get past, I think we have housing charts, we might start to see some positioning taking place in uh, on the short side for some of these equities in light of what's happening with crude oil. That expects to continue to move higher. Saudis are going to offer help, they said, but they said not until they see that it's really being, there's a real, uh, um, effect happening in prices. Well, that's really going to open the door for them to move higher. And uh, certainly, I think a slide in equities would be, you know, uh, <clears throat> would be uh, plausible. I'm not saying it's a big, big slide, but certainly that's not going to be something that's going to be considered a positive with higher and higher increased prices. Once again, my disposable income goes lower, cost of businesses, you know, whether it's transportation, et cetera, is going to be moving higher. Uh, but anyway, that being said, looking at the dollar yen here, uh, we're going nowhere. And then we have that holiday uh, for the next 11 days, it was shown here, uh, per the ascension of the new emperor. So that's really going to keep things really tight. So we're going to stay with 1226. And we'll, on the downside, because we may go and get that slip, Instead of coming here in the six, we're going to go with this 1136 because with the oil market, you can see that downside and you could see as the way the dollians already react on the weak side, we could quickly slide back. So we would, we definitely would have wanted to come in for starters at 1136, no higher than that. So let's come in here. You know, we'll keep this 1226 only because it's so close, but I'm almost bound to move that even lower considering, you know, that we could slide in, you know, the uh, 
uh, very, very low activity coming out of Japan for their own holiday. Um, looking out uh, for the actually for the entire week. Uh, let's go and move on to the dollar index. Okay, the dollar index defended last week's very minor pullback to finish the week at the highs. Weekly level 97.89 will be in the crosshairs with daily close resistance at 97.65. Support is 97.08 followed by 96.81. So let's look at that very minor pullback last week. So that was a very minor pullback. We even had that initially at the beginning of the week, 96.81 was our support level, remember? And then we're thinking, okay, uh, I think that was you know coming into Monday, we had that, and then on Tuesday we said, well, you know, maybe this dollar will slide a little bit further. So we moved it down to 96.62. Well, heck, they didn't even really even challenge that 96.81 very much. And we saw a nice recovery back to finish close to the week's highs. Um, we've talked about this before. We've got this key weekly level here, which is 97.89, which you can see that right here. You can even see it here, how important this level is. Look at on a monthly. Look how important that is. Now we're looking at a monthly chart. That 97.89 is huge. I mean, there's to me, I feel there's no doubt we're going to get to 97.89. What we do afterwards, that I don't know. That's what I'm saying. I feel pretty comfortable for a while. We're going to get to 97.89, and then the dollar would pull back, then it'll come back, then pull back. Uh, you can see that's huge. It's on a monthly chart. But once it gets there, I don't know. That's what I'm saying. We might just pop up to 98 and then turn around and uh, start to slide back a little bit. We'll see. Uh, but I think that that's where we're going, so let's move it to the weekly. And once again, you can see how important that 97.89 is here on the weekly chart, not to mention also the monthly chart. Um, once we get there, I don't know, but I think we will get there. So our uh, daily resistance is going to be 97.65, and may not even get there anywhere close to it today considering how quiet trading is going to be but we'll go with that 9765 uh looking out and if we were to slide back uh we're going to go with 9708 And let's take a look here at gold. Gold's find a little bit of uh, support today. It's actually saying it's moving a little bit higher in sympathy with the oil market. Um, let's go on and uh, take a look at what we stand here on gold. Gold continues to slide, uh, continues to slide with the pivot of 1267 providing support. A move to 1256 would find strong short covering. Resistance is 1287 followed by 1293. A daily close above 1293 would place the market in a neutral mode. So let's go and take a look here. Uh, we've talked about this. 
well, way, way back on the way up, 1267 being a pivot. And we thought we'd get a pause there. Well, we didn't even pause very much when we started to continue to move higher. That's where I think that's where they'll find the support. But right now, we are uh, a little bit higher in sympathy, as I said, with the oil market. Um, we did go on and indicate here on our Asia analysis that um, – Resistance is going to be 1287. In light of what we're cruising doing, I think that's reasonable to a certain extent. Uh, when I look here, there's actually some resistance coming in right there at 1285. That'll allow a little bit of decent short covering, but I think some people will be willing to go and step in and lay some off if they try and buy it. So we're going to keep that 1285. You see that here? Downside, well, they find a little bit of support with what's going on in the, in the oil market. So let's take a look and see. I'll go right there, 1274 for support right now. The pivot's still going to provide some overall support on a long term, a little bit medium term basis, but 1274 for intraday support. With crew doing what it's doing, it may not even get that close to 1274, but that would be it. And let's go on and move into the cross rates. Now, I did have some analysis on the cross rates. Obviously, we're very, very quiet right now um, here with uh, Euro Pound and some of these other uh, markets. Let's go and take a look here. Um, Okay, so we did go on, you can see here with the uh, Euro Yen, uh, it says it's open for a test to 25.45. We're going to go and move into that into that pair right now. We're just going to have to jump into the uh, other screen. Uh, so let's just go and do the Euro Yen quickly. I put Euro Yen is open for a test to 25.45 with further support at 25.22. Uh, Market remains in a daily EMA buy mode. Resistance is 26.21. So let's go and move into the that screen. We're looking at it here on the daily, and what we're noting here was it's still in a buy mode on a daily, on a daily. But uh, we were stating here is that uh, it's open for a test to 25.45 down here and potentially down to 25.22. Here's our 25.22. We'll take a look at You can see here we're trying to push up a little bit higher. Um, let's go and move into our, to our chart, which is generally what we look on here. So here's 25.48, we gave it to 25.45 is what we're looking for, but let's move this over here. I think we can go do a little bit of a slide here. Now, we'll, we're probably not gonna see much of a movement today. So in the short haul, I don't want to just move it to here and then move it just another 20 pips lower. Um, once again, as I said, Japan's on a holiday for the next 11 days. So it, it, movements are probably going to be tough to come by, okay? But um, 
Yeah, but if we do get this slide in equity, so let's go with this 25.45. We will go with 25.45 on our support. If we see the yen eventually strengthen, I mean, if all day or not, the yen may end up strengthening if we do get a slide in equities. We put resistance is 26.21, but that may be hard to come by. And there it is up here. Um, we'll move this just a little bit lower, 26.11. Euro pound is trading very, very quiet. Resistance will come in right there. Eighty six sixty five. That's not that far away. Boy, we're trading quiet as can be. Well, there it is, 86.64. Move it one quick pip up. I think cable's more apt to slide here. Or sterling, I should say. Uh, support? Boy, that's trading in one heck of a tight range. Eighty six thirty five. We did the euro yen. Let's go move into the euro odd, which is also trading relatively quiet. Well, it has been. Now we're trying to push up a little bit higher here. Uh, support as we're trying to break away is going to come in right there. You can see it here. We'll move it right there. You can see it right here at 57.21. We may have to just move this up a little bit higher. Um, that's to right there. 57.26, which isn't that much further up, but 57.26. Remember, it's going to be relatively quiet today. I'll see. I'll show you markets are closed. Uh, resistance. <clears throat> Some good volume in there, but... Um, so she's going to come in right there at Trying to motor higher, but we've got some decent little resistance coming in right there at that level. 
nice volume just above there. Let's see if they can't uh, push the stops a little bit. So we say 68.51 on the Euro Kiwi. It is in buy mode. Okay, with these these uh, <clears throat> exponential moving averages, will keep you keep you honest and not uh, not get yourself in trouble. Uh, sometimes we, at least for me, I sometimes I try and jump ahead and take the other side and have to realize, hey, we're still in buy mode. And it hadn't been that long that they've gone into that buy mode. Uh, support, if we take that dip. It's going to come in right there, 67.75. 67. So if we rotate lower, we'd be looking for 67.75 from here. Before we see some decent uh, buying come in. And let me go into the OS again. We did do the analysis also here on the OSCN. If you want to check in the basic technical, I'll get to that. So it says the OSCN has been on a short-term sell mode since the jobs data. Aussie jobs data. The market is now on trend line support. You can see now we're breaking below that trend line support. A break lower sends a pair to 79.50, which is a 38% of 7775 to 8072, confluencing with the 7960 level. Two consecutive daily closes below the trend line. So it has to be two consecutive closes below this trend line. We'll, to, uh, <clears throat> we'll target, and what they'll be targeting is the 79 cents here area here. Actually, they could break even lower, but it'll be instead of a dip here, you'll be looking for a move at least to 79 cents, if not even lower here, um, with uh, two consecutive daily closes above that, below that. The pair needs two daily closes above 80.48 to extend the next leg up. That's going to be pretty tough tall order to me to get a daily two consecutive daily close above 8048 now also you have to factor in now we may be open to a slide here and you could end up seeing the yen strengthen now we once again don't want to beat it beat a dead horse but remember we do have that the japanese holiday it goes for 11 days with the ascension of the new prince uh, crown emperor but that being said uh, hey look if these equity markets start to pull back because of this move in crude oil um then the yen's going to strengthen no matter what. Uh, so that being said, we're looking for a move down here to 79.50. Uh, confluence with 79.60, so we're going to have that as our bias chart support. And two daily closes below should go in, and, I don't want to say solidify, but should you know make this uh, two daily close below that will have us moving down to 79 cents. Resistance is now going to be right there, 80.14. That'd be resistance, 80.14. It's still on buy mode. The daily, you know, we, you can see here the momentum has changed. So on a short-term basis, yeah, you and I, as I said, I use my exponential moving averages for the 30-minute, but the two are gives us some, uh, uh, I want to say a medium term, but, you know, when we're looking here on a, a two, I'll try to give you an example. Look how we got the buy mode, and we came down, we kissed it, and we still went higher. We did not shift until here. Now, 30-minute might have had us adjust here, and then, then we got this dip lower, but the two-hour kind of gives you, like, what the overall mode is for the net. Let's say, you know, looking for several days out, not just a half an hour. But on the bigger scheme, 30-minute uh, daily, yeah, it's still in the buy mode. So they'll be looking to buy dips. So you get a dip down to 79.50. We'll probably definitely get some some buyers in here, but keep an eye on that equity market. The bigger picture would be the impact that we're going to get from oil, and that will not go away in the next day or two. Um, so resistance is 80.14. Let's go with uh, the sterling versus the euro. Uh, 
very very quiet trading we're just going to stick with these and those may still be in place which was this what, 45 31 and 45.89, boy, this is quiet as can be. Well, we had 45.27, we'll leave that there. 45.89, let's go on into the sterling versus the odd. No changes here on this one. And to do the Asian analysis on this one also, if, wait one moment. So downside momentum is slowing down, and we're looking at the sterling versus the odd. We can see the odds losing its own steam, so now we're seeing other pairs gain against that. There we go. Downside momentum is slowing down. 8092 support is confluencing with the 161. Uh, um, 89 2 support is confluencing with the 8094, the 161%. Upside resistance is 8246. So there's your upside resistance here. We'll go and mark that off. And support is going to come in right there, 8150, right there, 8152. I'll bring this up a bit here. Now, a couple of key things we want to look at. Eighty-one fifty-two would be your support. And we already mentioned eighty-two forty-six right here. Now, a couple of things I want to point out. You can see here now we're just now starting to flip a little bit to the buy on the two hour. Now, like as I told you, I use for the exponential moving averages, I use, I actually base them off the 30 minute. You can see we got this buy mode actually right here. Well, it's this one bar that got everything clipping. So you can see that once we got that, and let's say you close on this bar, you know, we still have continued to move higher from 8190. That's a close of this bar on up to what, not a whole lot big, but up to almost 20 pips higher. But we already got this buy mode, but on the 30 minute, you can see this market has been very, very choppy. But when we look at it from a two hour, we're just now generating this buy mode. So dips down here are going to, should be well supported. Okay. So um, we do have a support here, but any dips down here, probably if you were scalping around anything towards 8175 is going to be supported, but our, our, Bias charge support is going to be 8152. Let's go and look at the CAD again. This will be a tug of war between the, the Canadian currency and the yen because the yen could possibly strengthen if we see these equities pull back, but the Canadian currency is doing moving up you know, based on what's happening with oil. Uh, we're going to go on and uh, move the resistance right here. 83.88 for right now. I have to give that a little bit more room because of crew oil, but let's take a look here. For right now, we'll move it for 83.90.
if we start to see the slide, if the um, either like I said, it's gonna be a tug tug of war, but uh, it'd be eighty three fifty one, which isn't even very far away. And that completes the bias chart. And it's going to be, as I said, it'll be a relatively quiet day um, somewhat uh, because of um, so many uh, regions of the globe on holiday. Um, but uh, I'll get this posted into the room. And uh, good luck trading, which I don't know how much trading you'll be doing a day. It's going to be very, very light. But keep in mind that the moves that we're seeing here in the crude oil, we've got crude oil right now. Uh, I've got it showed here at 65.45 right now. So um, that will probably continue to strengthen over the next couple of days or so. But we shall see. And thanks for joining us here on the European Crossover Webinar.